え ?PS ビータのゲームってこんなに綺麗になってんのより美しくこんなに激しくなってんのより爽快にこんなに進化してんだよマジか !PS ビータのソフトがこんなことになってんぞプレイステーションビータ Welcome back to Retro Rebound In today's video we are going to Wilmington, North Carolina or At least I did. I went to Wilmington, it's where I went on a little bit of a vacation, and while I was there, like I do with any vacation, you may remember the video we did when I proposed to my fiance, and we were out in Niagara Falls, still had to take care of business, and by that I mean checking out a bunch of retro game shops. And so that's what we did in Wilmington, North Carolina, where we were on a little vacation, and some of the sites there were popping. So we're gonna put some retro stores on the map for you to check out. Both these stores I went to were fantastic, especially the pickings and the prices. We're gonna go over all of that here today ladies and gentlemen if you're new here and you're into watching a man spend a lot of his money on video games whether it be getting ripped off at gamestop or doing the occasional retro game store haul you're in the right place consider subscribing so first store i went to was in this place called the cargo district it is an awesome idea that feels ripped straight out of a jrpg it's a bunch of shipping crates that people have made stores out of and so you can walk into these shipping crates and find all sorts of stores from vintage t-shirt stores i mean that's where i I got this PS2 hat from all the way to pizza shops and one of the stores we found was in this big random brick building called video game time I just literally happened upon it when we were looking for a bookstore and it's in there it's a very small store and I found a bunch of Vita games and you know me I love the PlayStation Vita so I was all over the collection they had there because I'm in that stage now where it's time to start filling in the gaps so what you'll see here that I picked up is For starters, Mod Nation Racers Road Trip. I know, not the most Maddie game. 15 bucks though, and that was the thing I was really looking to do out here. I'm already vacationing, you gotta keep in mind, all right, gas, I gotta keep in mind food money. So I can't splash too hard, but there were certain impulse decisions I made we'll talk about in a little bit. But Mod Nation Racers, just one of those fun racing games on Vita, touts on the back that there are thousands upon thousands of tracks available online over 500,000 in fact which I thought was really cool but not like the big poppin one I was really looking for but what did excite me is I got to fill out some of the Lego game collection so what we have here is Lego Marvel Super Heroes Universe in Peril and Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes unfortunately the sticker on this one I'm gonna have to go ahead and spend some time getting rid of that uh, because it's not coming off but I absolutely love both of these games. I always remember when I learned Lego Batman 2 was open world, I lost my mind, picked it up day one, adored it. And Lego Marvel Super Heroes, I know we've gotten a million and one Lego games, but Lego Marvel Super Heroes was a big deal when it was first announced because all of the Lego games leading up to that point were like WB properties, DC, and so it seemed like there was no way we could get a Marvel Lego game, and we finally did, and it was incredible just how well It delivered and so I've never played Universe in Peril which is not the more open world style Lego Marvel superhero game that we're all familiar with it's a little bit of a different spin same here with Lego Batman 2 they don't really talk about the open world on the back so they're more of your typical Lego games and these for me are great cozy games that I enjoy to pick up from time to time when I'm looking for something to play on the go or I'm looking to do a little trophy hunting those are usually good pickups for that as well and then the last Vita game I got from video game time was Luminous Electronic Symphony uh, this one was 15 bucks I don't know if you saw the stickers on these but 15 or 10 each uh, but anyway Luminous as I fling this copy around is an electronic symphony game you'll see here on the back that it's non-stop music driven puzzle action so you can see like a little bit of Reminiscent of Tetris here. I remember people speaking really highly of this game. Again, when I see a Vita game going for under 20 bucks and I don't know what it is and I don't have it, it just immediately becomes an easy pickup for me. So when I was walking out of this store with, let's see here, 10, 20, and then 35, $50 worth of Vita games, I was pretty happy with that. So no complaints there. So that's what Video Game Time had to offer me. Small selection, really nice dude running the shop. But then after that, I went to Game Giant, and actually, shout out to, I did not get the gentleman's name, but someone did recognize me there, which is kind of cool when I walk into these retro shops and they go, you run YouTube channel? It's always fun to, to meet people who watch the channel and just get to talk to them about video games, so that was really nice. He was a super cool dude, and while I was there, I gotta say, 
that this store here, Game Giant, had some of the best prices I have ever seen in a retro game shop. I, I kid you not. Like when I was in there, I was stunned at how competitive the pricing was and how I didn't feel I was getting ripped off. You know, you're talking to the guy who lives in the Northeast. So I've done a lot of my retro game shopping in like Rhode Island and New York City and Connecticut. And so I'm finding that things are, are very pricey here in the Northeast. We want top dollar for everything. But when you go down the coast a little bit more, uh, North Carolina was happy to take my dollar at not the absolute maximum value. So shout out to Game Giant for a phenomenal selection. Just cleaning up the Vita collection here. I got Army Cores of Hell. This is a Square Enix game. And I was always really curious about this one. 20 bucks, again, easy pickup for me. I was always curious about this one. It looks like Pikmin meets an RPG meets Overlord and Overlord in particular is the one I have the most experience with out of those known titles there. I have not played really Pikmin at all, but Overlord I played a lot of when I first got my Xbox 360. So I saw a game kind of like that on the Vita, looked pretty charming. I was interested, so it was kind of a no brainer for me to pick up. Again, we got PlayStation Portable experiences here, Dissidia. Final Fantasy, so I had Dissidia 012, whatever the sequel is called. Uh, I've never played Dissidia Final Fantasy. The only one I've played was the 3v3 one that came out on PS4, and that was through the demo, which I did not like at all. So I moved on from that pretty quickly, but I've heard really good things about Dissidia, and so I'm happy to pay $15 for that. As you can see here, complete in box, comes with the manual, comes with the Square Enix member slip, manual, illustrated looking good reverse cover art here something i kind of had to be on the lookout there for because game giant did do a lot of case reprinting which i think is fine but their case reprintings were so good at times i was unsure if i was getting a legit copy or not so i think in the spirit of fairness i just had to say that's one thing you may want to keep an eye out for like i was able to tell okay the city is legit because when i cracked it open you had the reverse cover art that's pretty much impossible to replicate so yeah i just want to put it out there in case you ever visit Keep an eye out for that because I think for those who are not experienced collectors, it's pretty easy to, to get confused on this one. I picked up 358 over two days for 35 buckaroos. As you can see here, it comes with everything manual beneath that's the members card. And I believe this is, yeah, the end the uh, Nintendo DS health and safety protocol booklet. And uh, the reason I bought this one is not only have I really never finished this game truly uh, because I watched the movie when it came out with, I think it was 1.5 remix. And then I was playing it on my own and a friend of mine spoiled a certain character and something that happens to them. I won't say what. And so it kind of took the wind out of my sails. So between that and seeing the movie, I never really finished this one out myself, but I always thought, you know, this would make for a great video one of these days just to play through this for the first time, truly, especially now it's been probably eight or nine years since I got that moment spoiled for me. And with Kingdom Hearts 3 in tow, it's not really a massive deal. So yeah, point being is I, I want to go ahead and check this one out. Uh, I think it's worth getting in the collection, especially because yeah, sure, it's in the, the remastered packaging, but it's just the movie. So I think this is one of those Kingdom Hearts games that I'm happy to pick up for beyond nostalgic reasons. Like, of course I have Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 in the collection because I love those games, but Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, like that's one that I can only play through my Nintendo DS. So I was happy to get that one when I saw it on the shelf, especially all these copies are clean. That's the one thing I'm looking for with some of these games is how well do you keep your copies clean? Because I've gone to some retro game shops where I pick it up and the, the dust is on my fingers and that's not a pleasant feeling. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I also saw a rare Dreamcast pick up for me. I only have one game in my Dreamcast collection so I don't even own a Dreamcast, but that's Shenmue. And you all know how much I love Shenmue. Years ago, I was Chinese. But one thing I've come to love in the recent years is Sonic. And so when I saw Sonic Adventure 1, love this cover art, man. Love it, love it, love it. On the Dreamcast, it was $50. It does come with the manual. It does come with the disc, of course. And they actually did me a solid here because when they were checking me out for Sonic Adventure, the front case had actually popped off. And I know replacement CD cases are not a ton of money, but it does increase the value of the game a little bit. And so they gave me a free one right there on the spot. And that was really awesome to see because usually I do end up replacing these CD cases because they're not exclusive to like PlayStation or Sega. They were just 
what you would get from a standard CD-ROM packaging, whether it be an artist you listen to or a game you purchase, it was all the same. So they're easy to replace and it makes your game look better. So it was cool that they gave me a free one there. But Sonic Adventure 1, uh, this is pretty much my favorite Sonic game. I adore it. To have it in the collection is really exciting. They had Sonic Adventure 2, but it was like $130 complete. I wasn't ready to spend that much bread on a vacation on just one game. I'd rather get a nice big collection there, especially because their pickings here were so good. They had so much I was looking for. And one thing in particular that I'm going to talk about in a moment now that really surprised me. So I didn't want to splash too hard on that. I thought, you know what, Sonic Adventure 2 isn't too difficult to find. Uh, my fiance is still seeking out Sonic Advance 1 complete in box. She wants to find it. She's been looking for it for so long. She doesn't want to go on eBay. She's like, I want to find it now. That's kind of where I was at with Sonic Adventure 1. I was like, yeah, I just want to find this thing. Like, I want to have that enjoyment of discovering it. So right when I saw it, $50 off the rip, I was like, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Then I found a nice childhood gem here. I found Nightcaster Defeat the Darkness, a kind of magic RPG, Xbox exclusive. I absolutely adore original Xbox exclusives. They were so weird and different and experimental. And it was also there in that moment, I had the best feeling I think a game collector can ever have. I learned there's a sequel, Nightcaster 2 Equinox. What? There's a second Nightcaster? Look, I'm not gonna sit here and gas up the first one because to tell you the truth, I barely remember the first Nightcaster, but I, I do distinctly recall playing a demo of it, loving it, playing a little bit of the base game. I actually have behind me my original copy one moment. And as you can see here, <laughs> yeah, probably a copy worth forgetting here. Um, just the disc, got it for four bucks used from GameStop. You can see the, the value's gone up a little bit here, paid 13 bucks, but it is complete in box. It does come with the uh, all the slips that original Xbox games did come with. You can see here even like the, the manuals illustrated. Absolutely beautiful. And then 15 bucks was Nightcaster 2 Equinox. And I'm not sure if this was a different developer. It, it looks like it was Jalico, Jellico. Someone can correct me on that. But this one, unfortunately, not complete in box. So I'll have to hunt down the manual separately. But it was one of those purchases where I saw it went, there's a sequel. I need this in my collection now because I don't want to forget that this exists. So yeah, I was all over that easy combo pickup for me. Let me go ahead and put my original copy of Nightcaster back on the shelf. Because we just did a video on Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, I had to pick up the precursor, if you will. I have a pretty beefy Xbox Star Wars collection. So when I saw this for 15 bucks, pretty easy pickup again, complete in box. I really feel like people need to stop sleeping on Xbox games because I feel like with the direction Xbox is going in, especially 360 games are about to fly up. I just feel it coming. We're, we're seeing things go more and more digital, back compats no longer a thing, FPS boost no longer a thing. Like these are just games that are going to be sitting on shelves and rotting eventually, and they're gonna go up in value. So I'm trying to collect for Xbox where it makes sense. Again, going back to Nightcast, they're getting two exclusives here for combined less than $30 is a no-brainer in my book. If you care about value and wanting to get things on your shelf, even if you're not going to play them right away, if you care about just getting them for the best value, I feel like right now, as I said in a video months ago now, I think, um, yeah, you definitely want to start hunting for Xbox games. But I got Jedi Outcast here because uh, this is one I've actually never completed. Uh, I always get stuck in this game. I get lost in these levels trying to find like the one button you have to press, the one key card I missed on one Imperial officer that dropped it somewhere. So I, I want to one day conquer that beast and I never really had it in my collection which is kind of strange so happy to have it now and of course you know I can't neglect my PlayStation 2 so what we have here is the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 2 25 bucks little pricey but I have the first Legacy of Kane I know people speak so highly of it so I naturally had to pick up the sequel add it to the PS2 collection I gotta find out What's what's the big deal with Legacy of King? People want remasters and remakes. So I want to play through these games at some point, but I think before I do that, I want to play like Devil May Cry. Like there's a lot of action games I have yet to get my hands on, but this one is complete in box, unfortunately a black and white manual, but it does come with the slip here in the back. Um, I do again commend this store, Game Giant, for how complete and great looking all these copies were. This is probably the dustiest one I picked up. Like I can feel a little film on it, so I do have to wipe this one down. But 
Again, 25 bucks for Soul Reaver 2. Pretty easy pickup. And again, this, this store had a great selection where there was just so much stuff I saw and went, oh, right, I've been looking for that. So it just felt like a match made in heaven, if you will. I found... A game I didn't, I knew existed, but I didn't know existed on the PS2. I got Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. This is another 25 bucker. Uh, but you see on the back here, it's remastered for the PS2 system. I, I remember playing Size Matters on my PSP, but I didn't know they brought it to PS2. So I just thought this was a, a pretty easy get for me as someone who adores Ratchet and Clank. And truthfully, I say that yet I haven't played literally every single entry in the series. So yeah, this one again, complete in box. It is an illustrated manual. You love to see that. Can never go wrong with Ratchet and Clank. Uh, same thing I said with Xbox applies to PlayStation. You know, when you saw the PSN stores for both PS3 and PS Vita start to get taken down, games shot up in value. So I know it's not this game in particular, it's probably hitting its max value already. But when it comes to like the Ratchet and Clank collection, I think of games like that, which are gonna continue to go up in value as we progress more and more into a digital era. PlayStation, I think, has a better chance of doing back compat compared to Xbox, so maybe they won't explode as much, but just games that you may want to consider collecting. Last game before I show you some other goodies I picked up while I was out in Wilmington is a game I didn't know existed. I have to get a new case for it. You'll know why, as you see here. One Piece Pirates Carnival, 20 bucks. This GameStop sticker, fortunately, I checked when I was in the store. Uh, it is on the outside. GameStop, if you didn't know, used to put stickers inside the case on the cover art and it drove me up a wall. I hated that they did that. I have copies on my shelf behind me, uh, ones that I picked up when I was a kid that have the GameStop sticker on the spine <laughs> inside the plastic casing on the cover art. It's, it's heinous, man. It is an arrestable offense in my personal opinion. Nonetheless, this game spoke to me, as you'll see on the back here. They talk about 30 mini games. It's basically One Piece Mario Party. There's been tons of One Piece games, most of them falling into like the fighting category. We talked about an open world one separately, but I didn't know there was like a Mario Party clone. So yeah, easy pickup for 20 bucks. You know, I love to add a little anime game to my shelf, much to much to Locke's dismay, but I like to add a little anime game to my shelf from time to time. And so, yeah, when I saw One Piece Pirate Carnival, I thought this would be a fun one. I love the OG One Piece games. I just think there's a, a real fun spirit to them because you think of how popular it is and how long it's been going for. And then you you think to back when it first started, no one knew it'd be like a thousand plus episodes. So just crazy to see what it's become. And I think games like that can symbolize that sort of innocent beginnings. So I said I wanted to show you a couple other things I picked up. No, they're not games, but I still think you will find them interesting. Unfortunately, I did not film where I got this next thing from because I didn't think until I got home uh, when my fiance said, you should show this stuff off too. I was like, yeah, you're right. I went to this comic book store called Memory Lane and they had an incredible selection of manga, comics, and figures. They had the Black Series from the Star Wars figurines. They had a Bastila one there, but I only had limited room in my luggage because I took like one carry-on and one personal item. So I was just like, All right, I don't want to get too carried away in this store. So I wanted to pick one figure and I went with this one here, TMNT, The Last Ronin, my favorite personal comic book in Ninja Turtles history. I've read a decent amount of them now, not all of them. I love the Ninja Turtles as much as I think anyone possibly can. The Last Ronin is gut-wrenching, it is incredible, and when that game got announced, I am cautiously very excited for it. I say cautiously because I don't know how I feel about the Destroy All Human remake devs working on it and half the staff getting laid off. Uh, you know, this is a game that we should probably take very seriously, but nonetheless, I, I hope it turns out well. It's a comic run about if one Ninja Turtle lived and the rest died, and this one Ninja Turtle is using all their weapons. Bow staff, nunchucks, size, katanas, you name it. Like it. It is the master turtle, if you will. And part of the plot is finding out who it is, the trauma that they've dealt with, it's incredible. You'll see here this figure actually has like a little resealable thing that you can open it with on the inside. You'll find the last Ronin himself. Sorry, the camera is so close. It's difficult to show this one off without pushing against the, the backdrop, but you can see here beating out the reflections, how he looks, different weapons along the side here. You got the Ninja Turtle faces that you can swap out, kind of like a Nendoroid, more weapons alongside here. So yeah, this is uh, one of those pickups I absolutely had to get. It was like 35 bucks. Not too bad. Figure prices have become incredibly competitive in my opinion. I look at what like Banpresto does, where they make some really good looking figures for dirt cheap. And 
I don't know if I'm just not seeing something, but I typically go for their stuff over like the multi hundred dollar figures. But I know some people prefer like posable stuff. Last thing I wanted to show you, I did film this place. It was a card store among card stores. I mean, they had board games, cards. This place went a mile long. They had a whole back room dedicated to D&D. &D. Like this place, if I lived in Wilmington, I would be there every single week. It was awesome to see. What disappointed me is they didn't have any support for the Dragon Ball Super card game. But what did thrill me and was a great makeup for it is for only three bucks a pack, they had Mega Man NT Warrior card game stuff. So I did open one pack because I did want to show it off here on the channel uh, because you know how I feel. And for those who don't know, uh, Mega Man NT Warrior was the anime that was connected to Battle Network when it was very popular at the time. And you'll see here some of the cards that you can pull. Like I got a Dex Hollow. You can see some of the other cards I got here. Uh, what is this? Magic Man. So yeah, it just I thought it was it was awesome to see these all here. And and the reason I bought a couple of them is I wanted to buy one to open for myself. And then I got one of Mega Man, one of Proto Man. And what I want to do is actually because these are both uh, Grand Prix set. You'll see here this was a power up set. And then I bought a starter deck. Is I want to put these in like a shadow box and frame them together. Uh, you know how much I love. I keep saying y'all know, but you really do. You know how I feel about Mega Man and NT Warrior and Battle Network and now Star Force. I've been playing it a little bit since starting back in Christmas. I chipped through the opening couple of dungeons and really love what that game's doing. It's especially more mature and sad. So yeah, I just wanted to show off everything I picked up from games to a figure and some cards and stuff. It was an amazing time out there. If you're looking for a great vacation spot, I will say that Wilmington has a lot to offer. Incredible restaurants, incredible game stores, even though the pickings aren't that big. I will say video game time, the first store I showed off, they are moving to near a gaming arcade called Retroscape. So that'll be a pretty popping spot for gamers, but like gamers were well represented in Wilmington. So go ahead and check it out if you have yet to. It was a really cool place. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it to you. If you've been making any pickups, any recommendations of games I should pick up, any mistakes I made in this video on games I was presenting, of course, you'll let me know. Fire away down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.